I did it. A few weeks ago, I thought I had found the worst game of 2023 in Avatar A Quest for Balance. But then, Skull Island Rise of Kong reared its poorly rendered head and I entered my Thanos era thinking that maybe I had judged Avatar too harshly. Let's start by saying that whatever you've heard about Skull Island and how bad it is, the reality of this game is far worse. I'm not even exaggerating when I say I almost broke down in tears when I unlocked the Platinum and knew I would never have to deal with this nonsense again. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We need to start at the beginning, when I was young and naive to what lay before me. So without much further ado, welcome to this week's Endorphin Hunt. Let's get into it. Now we're going to start this hunt by going over the trophies we unlocked while working our way through the story. And I'm playing fast and loose with the word story here, by the way, because honestly, this whole thing feels like the developers of the game sat down in a room with a four-year-old playing with his dinosaurs and just wrote down the series of events that they watched the child come up with. We start by playing not as King Kong, but as his mother, Queen Kong. She's understandably pissed that her husband and son haven't come home for dinner, so she sets out to find them. Along the way, we're taught the basic mechanics of the game and the abilities that we have on hand, including heavy attacks, ground smashes, and leaps. We're also given some fairly easy enemies to defeat so that we can get used to the combat system. And in one of these fights, I earn my first trophy of the run, Rampage, for killing five enemies within 10 seconds. Damn, Mama Kong a bit of a beast, huh? We eventually manage to find our family just in time to watch the love of our life receive death by spanking from this jacked up dinosaur. And we are pissed. Time for us to teach this gore fool a lesson. Easy, easy. Well, I was winning! The moment was so dumb, it nearly killed me. With both of his parents brutally murdered in front of him, Diddy Kong somehow manages to escape Gore by hiding in a bush. And then we're treated to a montage of him growing up and surviving the island, as well as another trophy, the origin for completing the prologue. We don't even see like his Rocky Balboa montage. What is this man? I wanted to see him learn. <laughs> Wow! Oh, apparently Kong woke up with one hell of a hangover. And that confusing little segment of images is the closest thing we get to an objective for this entire game. You're never told what to do. Kong just wakes up and then you take control of him and just walk around until you stumble on something, anything, that seems to progress the game. This is what I meant by story being a compliment for this nonsense. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Nah, isn't he adorable? We start our journey in the Waterfalls Valley, the first of five stages that the game has to offer. Your goal is basically just to get from one side of the section to the other in order to activate the boss fight of that stage. Which brings me beautifully on to talk about one of the worst things about this gameplay experience. Whenever someone would come into my chat and ask me the inevitable question, so is this game really that bad? I wouldn't say yes or no, I would instead just open up the map of the game and then ask them to tell me what's missing. Can you see it? That's right, Skull Island Rise of Kong doesn't even tell you where you are on the map. There is no indication of your location, which results in literal hours of just wandering around, literally praying to the Lord Jesus himself that you'll find something. My chat even coined a couple of catchphrases for my playthrough of this. Where am I? And where am I going? And then the game has the audacity to include this little message under the map. How? Fecking tell me how, ye bastards. 
<sighs> this game is not good for my blood pressure. After about 90 minutes of wandering around and losing me marbles, we find our first boss battle, featuring some gouges opening cutscenes. Oh, this is the boss fight. <laughs> All right, we're not gonna take any damage. You guys ready? Ah! It takes us a bit of time, but we eventually put this giant penis to rest, unlocking two trophies for doing so. Incongruous encounter for defeating the creature that awoke us. I thought that was gore, but sure. And bare hands for killing a boss without using any special abilities. The irony of that last one is that I hadn't unlocked any special abilities yet, so... Thanks for the free trophy, I guess. And now on to stage two, Jungle Wetland. We find the boss a bit quicker in this one, a solid 60 minutes instead of 90, and set to work breaking the big crab thing. Once we've defeated it, we earn Conclusive Ending. I don't know whether to cringe or give them props for these trophy names. You know what, I'm shitting on them a lot throughout this video, so I'll give them this one as a you tried gold star and then immediately take it away for having hashtag stage two in the trophy description. You really couldn't have put the name of the stage there? Chapter three, The Dark Jungle, decides to significantly up the ante for its boss fight, giving us not one, not two, but three enemies to take down. Alpha, Beta, and Ch- Omega. <sighs> They also spawn mini enemies for us to deal with, so this one takes a couple of tries, but we eventually kill them all and are treated with this gem of a moment. I'm tired. <laughs> you guys ready for it? There it is! <laughs> Someone actually looked at this and went, yeah, that's solid, ship it. If you ever think you're bad at your job, just have this screenshot frame to put on your desk and you'll feel much better. We're also awarded Chapter 3 for fully exploring the level. The penultimate stage is called The Great Caverns and is an absolute nightmare for anyone with arachnophobia. It was also a nightmare for me, as it featured the boss with the most annoying mechanics of the game. After encountering the queen, she just disappears, being replaced by a bunch of smaller enemies to fight. Like, did I miss something here, or is she just a pussy? Turns out, she's hiding above us, moving across some webs she's made and only falls down when we yeet a rock at her, giving us a few moments to wail on her. When we eventually defeat her, we're awarded with three trophies. Decongesting the caves for the victory, the skillful for unlocking all of Kong's skills, and finally chapter four for fully exploring the chapter. I would say that all those trophies made it worth it, but it didn't. And then it was time for the finale, the thing we've been building up to, the objective the game gave us very clearly when we started playing. The, uh, what was it again? Hold on, let me check my notes. Avenging the parents? Killing Gore. Oh, well that actually makes sense. We climb to the top of this mountain and come face to face with our nemesis before entering the fight of our lives, which is exactly the same as it was in the prologue. The only difference is that Gore has picked up a new ability, a roar which stuns us no matter where we are relative to her. Like, I'm stood on the other side of the arena and I'm still getting stunned by it. Either Kong has some seriously sensitive ears, or this be some bullshit. I don't know if me using the Primordial Rage will count as a special ability, by the way, so I might have to reload the game in a second and do this whole fight again. Long live the queen. Defeat the nemesis to avenge your parents. Nice. <laughs> that twig snap sound effect was just... Mwah! icing on the cake. 
And let's take a moment to truly appreciate just how much I'm enjoying this ending as another trophy, Chapter 5, pops in the background. And there you have it. The story of this game is done and dusted, and I'm sure we're all better people for having experienced it. Now it's time to talk about the rest of the trophies up for grabs, starting with those associated with the game's combat. I didn't mention this earlier, but once Queen Kong has died and you start playing as Diddy Kong, all of the special abilities you previously had get taken away, leaving you with the basic attacks and one heavy attack. Which was lovely, especially because the game didn't even tell you that they were doing that. But the funniest thing about it is that even once I had unlocked all of those abilities later in the game, it would be rare for me to actually use them in combat. And why was that? Well, because the combat is god awful. I very quickly figured out that there was no point in deviating from my standard 3 combo of basic attacks because the combat system was just boring. I don't know how else to say it. Even though there were a variety of enemies to encounter, they would all have the same sort of attack system depending on their size, and they'd just swarm you, meaning that trying to load up a heavy attack would just result in you losing half of your health by the time you've executed it. Honestly, playing this game just resulted in my square button taking an absolute beating as I spammed the same attacks over and over and over again. But anyway, what of the trophies? By beating my way through the never-ending amount of creatures on Skull Island, we earned Exterminator and Apex Predator for killing 100 and 250 enemies respectively. That second trophy was earned at about the 3 hour mark of my gameplay by the way. 250 enemies killed in 180 minutes. To give you an idea of just how many are thrown at you while you're meandering around. We unlocked the Hunter for killing every type of enemy on the island, Savage for killing an enemy with another enemy, which was actually quite fun to just yeet crabs at their bodies, and Sniper for killing a flying enemy with a rock. Another aspect of the combat with a trophy attached to it were the executions. After repeatedly decking a mid to large size enemy over a certain amount of time, they would begin to flash red, giving us the opportunity to perform some sort of kill animation. After doing this to 10 enemies, we are awarded with Executioner. And then, finally, there were two more boss-related combat trophies that we had to go back for. The first one required us to defeat Gore without using any of our special abilities. This turned an already uninspired final boss fight into punch, punch, dodge, punch, punch, dodge, and rinse and repeat, until eventually that red bar finally depletes and we earn Fists are enough. <laughs> Alright there, Kong. I don't know what you're normally up to on your Saturday night, but I usually require more than just a fist. And then we journey all the way back to the first boss fight of the game, and repeatedly throw rocks at the penis from a distance in order to kill it without losing any health and unlock Perfect Kill. Completing the boss fights in the game and another set of encounters called Ascension Events, which normally just require you to kill a certain amount of enemies, reward you with skill points which you can then use in Kong's skill tree. That's right, this game has a skill tree, and just like everything else, it's the worst thing I've ever seen in a game. Each ability has its own tree with three possible branches leading into one final node and you're only permitted to unlock one branch for each ability. The first node for any ability costs 5 skill points, which doesn't seem that bad, until you realize that the boss fights award you with 4. Why 4? That's not even enough for the first node. Would it really have been that bad to just give us one extra? These are the boss fights! Who made these decisions? To get the final node for one ability, you need a grand total of 30 skill points, and when we achieve this for the first time, we unlock the Fighter. The next trophy, Training Completed, requires us to obtain all skill points in the game. Logically speaking, this to me should be unlocked once we've defeated every boss and every ascension event in the game, thereby having nothing else to do that would earn us skill points. But nope, we just randomly unlocked this, not long after beating the fourth boss. I've earned more skill points. So do you remember earlier? Do you remember earlier when we unlocked that trophy for, for getting all of the skill points? Right, yeah, well, that was wrong, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm just gonna nod along at this point. 
Speaking of the Ascension Challenges, our next trophy required us to complete all of them. Thankfully, the number of these located in each stage was clearly marked in the pause menu, as well as how many we'd already defeated. It would have also been nice if the locations of the others were marked on the map as well, but I guess beggars can't be choosers, eh? When we find the final one located in the first stage, we unlock the true king, as well as chapter one. Oh, three more left. Three more left before the platinum and this nightmare is over. I can do this. I can do this. Or maybe I can't, because the final challenge standing between me and that final trophy pop was locating all of the 25 collectibles scattered across the five stages. We had been introduced to the collectibles not long after completing the prologue when we found our first one and were awarded with Finders Keepers. Each collectible is, I think, intended to expand the lore of Skull Island, hinting at the human communities who take residency there and the creatures that stalk the land. Like this one. The hunt, the hunt, the hunt, the hunt, hunt men, hunt men. Does that, was that meant to be hunt men? Not hunt men. Um. <laughs> I feel like I'm about to get banned off Twitch for showing this. I can't put this in a YouTube video. I get demonetized. And that would have been all well and good if they weren't an absolute nightmare to track down. If the map had been designed with any actual gameplay in mind, it maybe wouldn't have been as bad. Or if the developers had included a feature that showed you objects of interest that had actually worked rather than the roar that they gave us instead. What? What are you showing me? <laughs> Squiggly lines that showed up over everything. Yeah, thanks for the help. I scoured every stage, looking in every nook and cranny along the way, even finally earning the chapter two trophy for fully exploring jungle wetland, but still some collectibles eluded me. And then with only two left to find, I actually made a breakthrough. I figured out that each stage had five collectibles to find, each adding up to the total of 25. So by scrubbing back through my old footage and writing down where I had found the previous 23, I was able to at least deduce which stages the final two were hiding in. About an hour later, I found the 24th. I only had one more. Surely the nightmare would be over soon. It is currently 1am. Okay. I have been playing this game for the past four hours straight. When I started up my session, I had two collectibles left to find, two. In four hours, I have found one of them, one. But, well, look what's ahead of me. Look what I can see in the distance. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not even on the ground. Feck off you little chickens. This is a moment. I have never in my life been so happy to find a collectible. Look, this may seem like an overreaction to you, but let me help put it into perspective. I finished the story of the game after about six hours of playing it. At this point, I had 17 collectibles found, meaning I had eight more to collect. It took me nine hours overall to find them. Nine hours hours. That's less than a collectible an hour. It got to the point where I wasn't even listening to the game anymore. I just put on some music and tried to maintain my sanity whilst I ran around in circles. After 15 hours spent in the fifth circle of hell, I can finally say that the Skull Island Rise of Kong Platinum Hunt is completed. And I've never been happier to do so.
When IGN reviewed this game, they gave it a 3 out of 10. And after playing it through myself, I can confidently say that this is solid evidence that IGN have lost their fucking minds. I completed the game about 3 days before writing this video and I have spent that time trying to rack my brains and find one positive, one redeeming factor of this experience. And I did actually come up with one, which was people's first reaction to seeing me playing it on Twitch. You'd get the standard, oh no, not this game, more times than not, but then you'd get an absolute corker. Like, huh, the main character kind of looks like King Kong. It is King Kong, or it's supposed to be anyways, but the game is so poorly made that someone genuinely thought it was just a cheap knockoff of the IP. And if that doesn't tell you everything, I don't know what will. The worst thing about it by far was the navigation, or the lack of to be more specific. The maps are just confusing and way too big considering what's actually available in each level. The raw feature gives you royal fuck all in terms of direction, and the fact that you don't even have a marker that tells you where you are has to go down in history as one of the most egregious things that a game development company has ever had the audacity to inflict on the gaming community. I think if I were to recommend this game, if I had to, it would be as a suggestion for something to play when you've got a group of friends over and want something to laugh at. Drink every time the game tries to throw another enemy at you to pad out its poorly constructed runtime. That kind of thing. But otherwise, I'd warn you to stay as far away from this heaping pile of doo-doo as you possibly can. Especially if the price point stays at $40. Who the fuck thought that was a good idea? But there we have it. The worst game of 2023 has officially been conquered and I couldn't be happier to leave it behind and never touch it again. And for the sheer torture I endured for this video, I think I deserve a like and subscribe. Please, I've been through so much. Also, if there are any more so you don't have to hunts that you want to see from me on this channel, let me know in the comments which ones and turn on my channel notifications for a brand new trophy or achievement hunt every single week and to support me as a creator. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day and happy hunting.